I mean, it's 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 pretty okay news. All right, so getting into it here. Is my camera in the way I want it? Yeah. All right. So getting into it here. For, so from today's, yesterday's, this week's uh, modern preliminary, uh, we've got blue white Urza. So at some point I kind of postulated that really you're mostly playing mono blue, and the black blue Urza decks, if they cut the thought seizes, played some white, it was even possible just to play splash in some white for Teferi and keep the thought seizes. But this deck, it seems like there's been some players who have been quite successful with this blue white Urza deck. It's popped up in a couple of places, so I thought we'd give it a whirl. So it's playing the full four copies of Thopter Foundry, as some of the blue black lists have been more recently, and two copies of Sword of the Meek. So this is a sort of slightly more focused on the combo version than some of the blue black lists were that were being popularized by Eli Cassis. Uh, we've also got two copies of War of Invention, which allows us to play a tool toolbox approach. So we can play one copy of Damning Sphere, one copy of Aether Spellbomb in our main deck in order to uh, be able to foil certain strategies in game one. Uh, then we've got a mess of zero and one mana artifacts. We've got Talisman of Progress. So Talisman of Progress is a two mana artifact that taps for colorless or a white or blue. If you tap it for a white or a blue, it deals one damage to you. The nice thing about Talisman of Progress is if you've got a sort of slow rolling artifact hand, let's say you've got Arkham's Astrolabe into Talisman of Progress on turn two, you can actually tap the Talisman of Progress to play your Emery. So you're sort of advancing your mana uh, at the same time you're getting your Emery into play. So it's... Uh, pretty decent play in that way. And we're playing the full four copies of Urza, Hort, Lard, High, Artificer, and a reasonable amount of Counter Magic in Metallic Rebuke, Archmage's Charm, and Cryptic Command to go with our two copies of Mystic Sanctuary. Then we've got Teferi Time Raveler, so just one of the most powerful Planeswalkers ever printed. He's just nuts. His static text is incredibly good in control matchups where we'll be able to set up in combo. And uh, if we're playing the mid-range game, it makes it much more easy to deal with some of our opponents. Our sideboard has some one-shot um, silver bullet artifacts that we're going to use and be able to tutor up when we bring them into our main deck. So that's nice to have there, as well as other control cards and ways to shore up against Burn with timely reinforcements, Path to Exile against all sorts of creatures in the format, and other tools. I'm going to hop into a league here, finish up my yammering, and yesterday was the beginning of my sort of farewell to Canada streams, but it turns out that my contract, which usually takes me to the United States for six or seven months at a time, has been suspended at least a little bit for the coronavirus outbreaks in the United States of America, which means I get to stay here slightly longer with all of you wonderful people. Roy in my chat, as well as some of the other people who pop in and out. So, going to fire off a few more streams another week or so. Tunneling Cat still tearing it up. Seven trophies ahead of the next highest. It's actually really incredible how often... I'm welcome to stay. Well, thanks, Roy. Um, I don't know where we can hang out on Friday, but I am planning on being in town. So... Shrug. Winning die rolls, good way to start the evening against Hugo Freitas. But this hand is unacceptable. Prairie Stream enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands, which we definitely do not. So we're going to ship this one. This is better. It's not good, but it's better. This is going to play whatever spells we draw. I'm going to ship one of these islands. And hope that this Damping Sphere lines up reasonably against my opponent's deck. I'm going to fire off this Mishra's Bobble on their upkeep. Just get it out of here. I would like my new card, please. Manamorphose. So hopefully we're against Prowess. Ooh. Red, blue with Manamorphose. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Not like this loud.
Not like this load, indeed. Well, we're gonna land this turn two damping sphere against. Oh, this has got to be storm. Uh, this damping sphere might be gross. So hashtag welcome to modern. Enjoy your stay. All right, we're slow rolling our way to victory here with a pretty reasonable sort of game plan here against Storm. They're going to have a bunch of remands most likely over the next couple turns, which is going to cycle them towards their repeal or unsubstantiate. They should have some kind of effect of that nature in their main deck. Um, I'm going to grab... Prairie Stream does have land types, but if I grab um, Hallowed Fountain here and then play the Snow-Covered Island in my hand, then um, I have the three requisite islands for Mystic Sanctuary, as well as having... Um, I could have bobbled myself actually. That, that's a good. Uh, that's a good proposal. I did not consider bobbling myself. Um, where was I? Yeah, I have the two basics now for, for um. For the prairie stream, if I draw it later, remand with brawl is super good though because they get to uh, loot. Because of the Brawl ability, uh, Brawl says, whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card, and then Remand draws them a card. So they're going to be able to find their uh, answers for my Damping Sphere more quickly. Or just more, more creatures. Oh, hey, we put together Thopter Sword. Neat. So if I ever resolve my Urza from here on out, we just kind of win. But I can also play this Sword of the Meek. If they remand it here, I can just play it again. Cool. So now I have a defense and a clock um, that I can fire off at the end of each turn, and they have to have a remand for my Urza or I win. Usually they pit play exactly one repeal and one um, unsubstantiate, I think, because that can also take spells off the stack. Uh, opt, sleight of hand, metamorphose, pass in flames, serum visions. Okay. So the brawl and the goblin are fighting against my damping sphere here and actually making it possible for them to play multiple spells each turn. Uh, they're going to always yield. I, I don't believe it's possible to always yes the sword. If it is, someone let me know. Getting my prairie stream here. We want to put as many Thopters into play as possible because we are looking to end this game. Of course, Urza is going to end the game on the spot, but... If he does not... Um, then we want to have a pretty quick clock with these Thopters. Okay, so the Metallic Rebuke makes me think it's entirely possible that we're just going to sit on these Thopters and kill them with this. I have five mana in play right now, which means uh, I can make a further five Thopters. we got four power, so we're going to be able to deal nine damage next turn. They can Gifts Ungiven here. So this gives them access to anything they want. I think it's probably a bad idea to let that resolve, so let's just let's just fire this off. I suppose I could have resolved the Urza through counter magic there, but yeah, actually I probably should have just done that. Pieces of the puzzle main. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I probably should have just jammed the Urza there. Seeing a Goblin Electromancer is kind of heartening. Another land is fine. I wonder what they're... Okay, sleight of hand, sure. I'm 
just gonna loop my sword. So, without Urza, the the sword looping is actually pretty uh, click efficient. Urza makes it a lot more clicks. His way of producing mana. Why no jam Urza playing around something in particular? No, I think I'm just being bad. I think I just, like, I committed to the line of just getting them dead rather than trying to get Urza through a, a remand um, before I drew the Metallic Rebuke, and then when I drew the Metallic Rebuke, I didn't adjust my plan uh, appropriately. So, so we're, we're swinging for eight here. Uh, there's no reason not to try to play Urza post-combat, but there's no reason to play Urza pre-combat. So, let's see if they kept another counter. They almost assuredly did, but I've got enough power and toughness. Oh, I played the Australian, so I have to play one more. Okay, that's fine, because we don't, we don't need any more power and toughness. Mana Morphos. Okay, so that's a ritual that lets that gives them access to more mana. Then they can remand. They have, then they have two mana for their gifts, which will cost two, I believe. So I think they've sequenced correctly for that. No, because they're going to play the remand, and then their gift is going to cost three if they have another gifts in their hand. I think, yeah, I think, I think they screwed it up because they didn't realize their remand would count as another spell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were hoping to go mana morphos remand and then gifts. So here's their gifts. So if they have a way to get my damping sphere off the table here, and they still have past in flames in their hand, so whatever, or they have past flames in their graveyard. So, but the damping sphere, yeah, the damping sphere, they, they should be able to get it off here. So there's the repeal. I want it in their graveyard. Uh, this says, put the chosen cards into your graveyard. So whatever I choose goes in the graveyard. So I will choose repeal and grape shot. I'm pretty sure we're dead here, but we're just going to F6 and see what happens. Oh, did I do the thing? Yeah, I did. Cool. So they play Past in Flames. They play Repeal, and then they have Manamorphose plus a million Rituals. So I think they kill us here no problem, but we are at 22. They can attack for 5 afterwards, but they need to get their Storm Count at least to 17 with what they have. I don't think it's going to be a problem. No, okay. We're, we're, we're done here. I don't need to play this out. Yeah, that's fine. We got surprisingly close considering how bad the hand we kept was. So, Damping Sphere coming in for sure. Tormod's Crypt seems fine. Aether Spell Bomb, not necessary. I think I might want Path to Exile. To be clear, we were dead either way. I think so. And then Mystical Dispute's pretty good here. So Dispute's better than Metallic Rebuke in most cases. Path is supposed to be is is pretty awful against these decks, right? If I just board like this, it's a lot simpler. Gust or dispute or path. So I think path might be worth it. I don't know what exactly you're supposed to do against storm. 
Path to Exile is not a card I play a lot of, so I definitely... I don't think Cryptic is less than great here. They bring in Arya, shouldn't we leave Rebuke in? I I guess we could. It's an awful lot of counter magic to be leaving in. I have to fairies. And Damping Sphere messes with their Aria plan as much as it messes with anything else and gives us time to find... So these, Actually, Archmage's Charm is really medium in this matchup. Throw a path in here. I mean, we're going we're gonna to do it like this, see how it goes. All right. I'm going to keep this, again, a little medium, but I think Cryptic sucks and Charm. I think Cryptic has enough versatility that it's, it's worth keeping a little bit. Charm is definitely not good. That's I don't often take Charm out, but this is definitely a matchup where I should. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm nobody's boss. I'm my own boss, but I'm a terrible employee. Let's go. Wait, aren't you uh aren't you a follower and don't you subscribe to me on uh on YouTube? Doesn't that make you my boss? Pretty sure you're my boss. Pretty sure my 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 people who pay me no money but give me internet clout of a absolutely microscopic size. I'm pretty sure you guys are my bosses. Okay, so we're going to play Misty Rainforest because I'm going to get a Hallowed Fountain with it, and we're going to be leaving mana up for this Mystical Dispute in case there is a Brawl or a Goblin Electromancer this turn. And this next turn, we're going to be playing Emery with Dispute back up. My tax dollars pay your wages. I don't think that's how that works. I wish. I was getting some of that sweet Canadian tax money. Well, we got most of our combo. All right, Emery, take the wheel. All right. So how badly am I going to get messed up by this next turn of theirs? They could literally kill me. So. But if they don't have Arya, we probably have The problem is I don't have anything else in my hand to do. So next turn, I get to play Thopter Foundry into Emery, um, assuming they don't remand it again. And I think leaving the Mystical Dispute is worth it if I'm facing literal death. Hey, look, it's a Brawl. All right. Now here's where they're going to have the Mystical Dispute and snap it off. Yep. It's weird how rarely I run into Storm, but like... It feels like when I do similar to Burn, they're just like my nemesis. But with Burn, I get close games. With Storm, I just like I get like instant two owed. Uh, that's a pretty good pickup though. Are you ready to get tempoed? Here's my man of war. Man of war. He's 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 not a god of war, but he is a man of war.
barrel. You may resolve your barrel. You... They roid me, Roy. Manamorphose, Desperate Ritual, Aria. They put Manamorphose and Ritual into their hands. Seems good. Roy. They roid me, Roy. They roid me. These guys are on Roy. Hey, look. That's pretty good, huh? Okay, so I can whir for two as is. I uh, have a land drop. Prairie Stream comes into play on tap right now, and I don't need my Mystic. So I think... I play Thopter Foundry, and then I were for the Damping Sphere here. They can't respond to it. In theory, I could let them start playing spells and then were for my Damping Sphere. I don't think that's worth it. Uh, they will be able to kill my Teferi. I don't know how much I care about that. We're all going to die, probably. Uh, I really don't, don't agree with your assessment, sir. Let them play first, then we're... Yeah, I think so. Because this makes it looks like, look like perhaps I have something else up. Uh-oh. Whoops. Whoops. All right, what do you got? So they're playing Aria. Damping Sphere is for all spells, but their next spell is going to cost one less anyway. I think just worrying now is worth it, though, so they don't get to play a spell that costs less. Actually, hold on. So if, they're, if their next spell is going to cost one less anyway, then I think this is fine. So we'll, we'll let them resolve the Aria, and then their next spell, we, we deal with that one. So Aria of Flames, three-man enchantment, enters the battlefield. See, this is the kind of thing that's, yeah, we're going to really mess them up here. Because their next one is not, their next spell is not going to be reduced by enough. Oops. I need to tap that for white. So they are going to get to kill my Teferi here, but there is realistically no way we were going to pre prevent that. And landing the Damping Sphere here is... I should be able to prevent them from doing too, too much because uh, they're going to have three red in their pool. They have access to one blue. Their next spell costs two more, one less. Okay, so that, that doesn't actually net them mana now. So they're, they're not able to go off anywhere near as hard. Yeah, spend all their men on sleight of hand and three damage on me? Sure. And they didn't attack. Interesting choice. Okay. Uh, so I can use this flooded strand to get my whir back using the astrolabe, which can get me a second damping sphere if I want it, or another one of the artifacts from... My deck. I think I just want to hold Whir. So we're going to get the Mystic Sanctuary, play Arkham's Astrolabe to pick up my Whir. I could get Mystical Dispute instead, but I don't think it's as good. So six mana right now. I can play Astrolabe for one, Emery for one, but then Sword costs me four. I could play Sword for two, but I really want to draw the Whir. So I think we're just playing Astrolabe and Emery this turn. Uh, I have redundant artifacts to sacrifice the Thopter Foundry if I want to. We could mill uh, Sword of the Meek here. We did not. We milled multiple Thopter Foundries. <laughs> Let's go Urza. I guess we'll settle for Astrolabe. Yeah, Astrolabe's fine.
Okay, so the Arya is currently a lightning bolt. Past in flames. Okay, so I can get a Tormod's Crypt with this or a second Damping Sphere. And the question is, which is going to slow their turn down by more? Um... And if I do get a Tormod's Crypt, am I leaving this path? Am I letting them resolve the Past and Flames first? Probably not. I recommend Trinisphere. I don't have one. Do the spheres, spheres stack? Yes, they do. That's why I'm thinking Second Sphere could be good here. Although the Aria will get really big really fast, but then we're going to have Sword of the Meek next turn. I think we get a Second Sphere here. I think it's worth it. And... If I am mistaken, may God have mercy on all of our souls. Oh, crap. Right. They can still play counter magic because I don't have this Teferi anymore. Right. So it didn't matter anyway. So. Whoops. I got Teferi complacent. So we're just super dead. No, I still have the Damping Sphere in play. Cool. They just spent all their mana, so their Pass in Flames is super not going to kill me right now. Nice Pass in Flames. Sick. Oh, sick. We won. Uh, Yeah, I have to play Urza first. Because otherwise I won't be able to cast this sword. Hey, look, we won. Hey, Roy, I did it. Opponent is not impressed. Opponent says K, 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 K. I hope that was not divisible by three. And then it said only luck, which is... Potentially accurate. That was definitely definitely something there. I don't know about Path to Exile. But I think maybe Rebuke coming back could be okay. Take out one Cryptic. And one Thopter Foundry, something like that. Oh, wait. I'm too low now. I'm a freaking idiot. Don't worry. Yeah, Rebuke is fine. Take that Storm deck, get wrecked. What did you do today, fellow social distancing pals? Well, I can't go to the gym in the building because it's been closed, so I went for a lovely walk um, where I stayed at least six feet away from all the people that I saw. Uh... My grandmother played a bunch of Mario. We ordered in Indian food. It was pretty great. I think we're good here. I suppose I could bring in Aether Gust because it flips the Aria, Aria out of play. It lets me gain 10 first. can also use it on a Goblin Electromancer. Take out one Emery and one Teferi. Teferi is okay, but if I'm bringing in a similar effect... Gust for Arya sounds neat, and by neat, I mean savage. Yeah, it's not bad. This is an acceptable ish hand. It's got turn one cantrip, turn two rebuke, so theoretically, we, we've got, we got stuff going on. Big stuff. Ooh. Look, spells. Ooh, more.
more spells. I love it. Ooh, and they didn't play anything on turn two. Love that feel. What are you... Are you guys seeing this? Look at this glitch. All right. Let's dodge to turn two brawl. We, we done did it. Now we got to try to dodge the turn three brawl. End of turn manamorphose. What the hell does that mean? Sure. This, this can't possibly mean anything good. They, what? They, it's like, what? So they wanted to cantrip, but if I countered it, they didn't want that to happen on their turn, because I guess that would be more of a tempo loss for them. I, I guess that's what that was about. It was a very astonish. Okay, so we can currently were for... Tormod script. So depending on how they set up, what if they if they want a combo soon? Uh, oh, they wanted to keep hitting land drops and they didn't. That is really good news for us. I could field them here, but since I don't need to to advance my board state, I don't want to give them extra mana at instant speed because they can actually use that. Were for Ornithopter. Yeah, that would have been the sick beatdown plan. And then you slam your. Um, High alert. Okay. I think once again we're doing nothing here, but this turn, if I get to the end of their turn, I'm going to uh, shoot their, their Spire Bluff with say, a Broad A. While that is rude, I don't want to whir into their one blue, so I think we're just losing the Astrolabe here. Kind of sucks. I suppose I could have fired off Rebuke there because then I would still have Aether Gust up on their turn, but. Okay. Field into Rebuke. I can no longer field into Rebuke. Unless you meant there. Foundry time. I think it's probably Foundry time. But I, I want to mess with their mana here. I have one blue open, so it's entirely likely that they won't try anything fancy to fire off, like, gifts. Yeah, they just let it resolve. Cool. So we're sort of bluffing our way through for the moment. I was really hoping for a land drop there. I needed the extra uh, mana here. Hopefully they don't... Yeah, I can't do anything about that. Oh, why couldn't we hit land drops? Why are we playing a 22 land deck sometimes? Sometimes you got to ask yourself the hard questions. So I'm going to toss one of the extra Urzas. I don't think that I need more Urzas. In response to his abrade is what I wanted to field rebuke hold up gust. We we can't do that. That that doesn't that doesn't happen. That's not, that's a lot of, that's not a thing that can happen. Okay, so I can't, can't rebuke that. Losing the Astrolabe was big, yeah, it's possible we, sh we were supposed to fight over that. Goodness gracious. All right. Well, we now have Rebuke, but they now have Brawl, so... Cheese with the Abrades here. So I can th sack the Thopter Foundry. In response to the Abrade, I wanted to field Rebuke Hold Up Gust. I don't 
So I still don't think we can do that. I, I, either you're not using enough words to describe the play that you want to make. Because they braided at the end of my turn. And we had four mana. So we can do field into rebuke. Or we can field into gust. But we can't, we can't do all those things. Okay, so I think I have to let that resolve again. It's a really awkward, crappy game. <coughs> All right. Well, that is a land. It doesn't get me anything, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. I'll take it. Take the good with the bad, take them both, and here I have the ability to war for Damping Sphere. So if they ever tap down, we have that going for us. You can also tap for three and war for a Tormod's Crypt and just have it sit, which is pretty okay. In fact, in order to get a card out of our hand, we might be doing that at the end of this turn. Desperate Ritual. So I can attempt to Aether Gust this and then Metallic Rebuke the spell afterwards. Since I'm on seven cards in hand, I'm incentivized to do something here. So I'm going to gonna Aether Gust. Just play my, my good old Memory Lapse. It's a Homelands classic. Okay. Uh, I don't think... And they put it on top. So they're going to go for the same thing next turn. That's fine. I would like land. I got a land. Sick. Yeah, I don't want to tap any lower. Yeah, it does tell you if you put it on the top or bottom. Of course. I mean, the only reason it wouldn't is if it was literally broken. I think we're going to field at the end of this turn, yeah. Uh, assuming that everything else goes reasonably well. All right, so... They have three mana right now, so if I rebuke this, they can just pay for it. Uh, then I could whir for zero, which doesn't really get me anywhere. I think I have to let this one resolve. Got cryptic, so theoretically I can be okay here. Second ritual, yeah. Pass in flames. So I think I think this is where I need to whir for zero and try to get that through. They just wanted the card on top of their deck so they could make the exact same play on the next turn. <clears throat> Jeez, Remand is so obnoxious. Ugh. Sure. So if I rebuke... They're past in flames. They only have one mana left afterwards, but they've got Desperate Rituals, and they've got a Mana Morphos, so they can start going off into their graveyard, no problem. It's not deterministic there. So the first ritual they play afterwards, they have three mana left for. I mean, rebuking twice was going to have the exact same outcome as worrying for zero and then rebuking would. All right, we're going to fire this off and then see if they brick off.
they had another remand in their hand. So they they just had it all in terms of the ability to respond to us. We stalled on a bunch of land drops, and it's really going to mess us up here. So we got to hope that they somehow brick off. They do have a lot of cantrips in their bin. Oh, they had a Gifts given in their hand. All right, well, I think we're just dead. Pretty sure. Well, wow, they, they haven't even resolved the Pass in Flames yet. Yeah, sure, but it, it, it doesn't... How does that... I don't... Yeah, I just don't know if that sequencing matters in any particular way, does it? Like, if I rebuke, and then they deal with the rebuke, and then I go, aha, I had a whir as backup, or if I whir, and then I rebuke as backup, like, I don't... The, the storm count is animated. I, I don't know if I ever noticed this before, but it's pretty sweet. If you have one remand, you get to re nuke their yard. I, I guess so. So you're saying if I play the rebuke and they play remand and before they draw the cards from remand, I get to whir afterwards and that's better because, yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah, it, it didn't matter, but I, I can see I can see why you were you were going with that. The problem with rebuking first is they could just pay for it. And still have mana remand me. Like they had, they had quite a quite a chunk going because they had double ritual, which I couldn't counter the first. Good golly, this is uh, not a good opener. Uh, this is better. I think we're gonna bottom Archmage's charm here. Because it's uncastable with this hand. And it's less value than Urza. Although Urza is something we can definitely draw more copies of. And I'd rather have interaction, I guess. Yeah. This hand's better, but it still sucks. Eh, it's getting better. Simic growth chain. Oh, we hit uh, hit omelet for the first time in a while. I assume could be one of the other Simic growth chamber decks, which there are at least one or two of floating around now. So this damping sphere is going to be awesome here on turn two, huh? I thought we were playing Emery, but Hi, friend. Have you met my good friend Damping Sphere? Man, so having Damping Sphere in our opening draws has been great twice in a row, which was... Oh, we got bogged. Luckily, it's uh. Are they salting off? No, this this human being is not salty. The storm player was salty. They just said, "Ooh, ooh that's game one, man." Lol. And I, yeah. I mean, sometimes magic happens. Sometimes you suck and die.
So I have metallic rebukes in my deck, so I would like to draw one for their turn just in case. So we're going to fire off a bauble before their draw step. They have a forest in their hand, so they will be able to play the forest and play the ancient stirrings that we just saw them draw. Or they could play that as Susa. Girl Turf, sure. Oh crap, they can bog me again. <sighs> Although the Girl Turf is a colorless tapped land, so. And then we are going to have blue, blue, blue up next turn, so that's reasonable. Uh, I can fire off this bauble now safely and then get it back. As much as possible, I just want to keep it out of their graveyard during their turn, so... And I could play Thopter Foundry and have Rebuke up. I'd rather keep Archmage's Charm here. Yeah, it plays around Bog. That was the reason we... It's not that I specifically wanted to draw Rebuke, it's that I had two Baubles and there was a possibility to draw Rebuke. So I was like, alright, we'll do that. Yeah, I did not articulate the fact that holding on to the second bobble in play has a bunch of upsides. It's also kind of nice to hold on to more bobbles in play sometimes, because when you get an Urza, having more mana in play is really good. Okay, they got an Omelette. It's going to cost them two. Pretty sure I'm rebuking it. There you go. Three mana. What is this? They're playing the growth chamber. Okay. Oh, Dryad. That is definitely eating a rebuke. Oh, I should have left the bubble on tap. That's okay. We'll be fine. Being a baddie. Hold on. Being a baddie. So I think... So charm is more... Uh, is less mana efficient. So firing off the charm there seems better. And probably is. Yeah, but we can play Foundry and hold up Archmage's Charm next turn. No, we cannot. But that's fine. I want to field and hold up Charm next turn. I'm on the clock. All right, we can still Thopter Foundry and hold up Charm this turn. But I'd rather... So Field of Ruin doesn't knock them down any mana, and it actually puts them up colors. So I think I want to play Misty here. I'm going to bobble them. Oh, I but I won't be able to also play Bobble here. I think that's probably okay. And I can get uh, Mystic Sanctuary here and put the Rebuke on top of my deck, which I'm going to draw. So let's do that. Now that would have been a reason to... Okay, this here is a reason I should have actually um, played the... What am I... What are... Where are my words? So I'm going to draw this Metallic Rebuke. The only thing that I'm like terrified of on this turn is Titan, I think, so... 
think I'm going to replay this bauble and tap down. Because we're about to draw the Metallic Rebuke off the top of my deck. So. There's a possible bad scenario here where they have a second Dryad. And they're able to get it through my Metallic Rebuke. Explore. Yeah, that's fine. I wanted to save the bauble from the uh, the bog, which is hiding in their hand right now. They can play it anytime they want. Okay, now now that they've played stuff, we're pretty safe. Omelet is fine this turn, especially against the damping sphere. They bog my Misty Rainforest? Sure. Thank god you didn't tap your Damping Sphere, it would have turned off. That is actually true with Trinisphere. When I was playing Legacy yesterday, I went and I looked at it, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're one of those friends. Okay, uh, the Bog's in their hand. They don't have any way to put it into play at instant speed, and for some reason they missed their attack with Azusa. So we're just looking to draw combo here and close up this game. Emery out my Bobble. Hardcast the second Bobble. Play Field. And pass the turn. Uh, if their bog comes out, we should be able to uh, to pop the uh, Bajuka bog. Trini Sphere does that, but Tobago Sphere doesn't. You are correct. Uh, Tobago Sphere was printed in Fifth Dawn, um, and they had decided there was too much artifact nonsense going on, so they just they just didn't print the while tapped text on that one, which is which is honestly smart. It just cleans it up, you know. Teleria West. What do you need your blue mana in play for? So their hand is Bog plus one card. I should know what it is. I want to say it's... Oh, no, it's the one they drew off Explore. Sure. Top card, Growth Chamber. Perfect. That's not getting them anywhere. Um... Suppose I can fire off this second bobble. I don't need that many artifacts in play right now. Just looking to draw some cards again, pick up my combo and get out of here. I would have fired off the um, Archmage's Charm, but I don't have a fetch land to reset it right now, so it doesn't, doesn't really do as much. Play Urza, get a Karnstruct, get a Bobble back. Only getting one back is fine if they want to bog me. Okay, and we've got Rebuke and Charm here. Yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I knew they I know they drew Simic Growth Chamber there, so their hand is Growth Chamber of oh, Vesuva was the third. So Growth Chamber Bog Vesuva. Vesuva becomes a Teleria West, which Yeah, they can tap to and then they can bounce it, and then they can transmute one. Uh, I'd be interested to see what they get here. I wonder if it's Summoner's Pact. If it is, they're going to really screw themselves up and we might be able to kill them with Field of Ruin. Summoner's Pact, sure. Go nuts, friendo.
So I think I just rebuke this. Last card in their hand is Bog, and they don't. They don't have a. How are they paying for it next turn? They have this Snow Covered Forest and this Castle Garenbrig. Garenbrig actually can tap for one green, even though there's a Damning Sphere. Yeah, they could have gone for EE. -E. I suppose that could have been something that they did. Aether Gust, Disdainful Stroke. I think Path to Exile. I think Rebuke can go out. Aether Spellbomb because I don't have Ashiok. I don't know if I want the second Damping Sphere. Oh, they probably had another basic forest in their deck. They usually play two. So if we field their um, Garen Brig, they just get their get their non-snow forest. Usually they have three forests. It's like two snow and one regular, I think. They at least want one of each for Field of the Dead, but... I should probably find a spot for the second damping sphere. Nat natural drawing, it seems really good. Um, yeah, not Urza because it's part of the combo. Not uh, Emery. Foundry is what I want to cut. Just one. Shave a little bit of combo. Brought out one sword. Yeah, sword is probably better. They have bog. Yeah, that's the thing, is like sometimes you emery one of your combo pieces without intending to, and then you just get blown up. All right, we're going to mull this zero lander. There we go. We're going to bottom sanctuary here. Hand is definitely not great, but we're keeping it. Uh, hopefully a turn three damping sphere is going to do some work here. <laughs> Maybe not, though. Hey, look. We just did the reverse Thoughtsies bug, the Astrolabe bug. Man, this deck likes to flood sometimes, and then other times you can't draw a land to save your life. Oh, boy. Oh, no. All right, I would like to top deck Damping Sphere, please. Please, please stop. I'm already dead. Oh, no. Oh, they bounced the Karoo. Oh, that's always death. Okay, so if they have a Titan, they can play it right now. Which... In their eight Titan deck, I'm assuming that they do. I think we just die. I want to see if they have all the all the cards required to kill us here. Oh, Slayer Stronghold. Oh man, this deck is old school. It's not uh, Hanweir Battlements. Oh, 
Although I think this means they do kill us on this turn because they give the Titan 10 power, and then when they attack, they can get the uh, the double strike from Boros Garrison. Not Boros Garrison, Boros Stronghold? Boros something. Yeah, this guy. Oh, Sunholm, Fortress of the Legion, that's right. The non-legendary legendary land. They have a second Boros Garrison. Man, this deck is super old school. All right, so that's a double striking 10-6. Uh, yeah, I boarded in the past. I just didn't have one, huh? So as I was discussing with my opponent, I uh, I missed the attack there on turn one. I definitely didn't uh, didn't get in there and uh, just couldn't recover from that mistake. So it's kind of sketchy, but I have a redraw. I'm gonna keep this. My 22 land deck. I've got a second draw. I don't think I have to play this Hallow Fountain untapped on turn one to path. And I think that makes it way too obvious that I have a path. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping this on a seven. Oh, shoot. I missed my upkeep bubble there. I'm supposed to have the stop and be able to see what they drew. All right. Well, we are prepared for this. This time. Next draw is Sun Home. All right. Well, that means they can't turn to kill us. If the Sun Home is in their hand, I th think. Hey, we got rewarded. Do I just play the Sphere here? Yeah, I do, because this shuts down their amulet lines. And if they have a Karu in their hand, a uh, land that taps for two, they won't be able to uh, blow me away here. All right, deck is deck has given us the fire this game. If we get to Urza next turn, we're going to be in pretty good shape. <laughs> Rex Sage. Lots of pain in the ass. Bye, Damping Sphere. You were nice for a little while. All right, let's draw an Emery. So if I Urza, I don't have Cryptic, and I don't have Path. Don't think Urza's worth playing here. Unfortunately, I think we need to sit. What do I have for two? Chamber, yes. Azusa. I think I'm just going to fire off the counter on that. They don't have any blue mana up. Stops them from going off at all. Uh... I can put Prairie Stream in here for no damage. They've used their land drop for this turn as well, so they should be dead in the water on this turn in terms of trying to go off. For what are we holding up Cryptic, my friend? OK, 
Okay, so they have a growth chamber in their hand, which gets them to six mana right here. Pretty sure I need to path the Titan that comes in. So we're just going to play Emery here. And then next turn, if we get to play Urza, we win on this spot. Is that correct? I need colors. I need one colored mana. Yeah, I was holding up Cryptic because if they if they tightened there, we were dead, and they would have if we uh, if we hadn't Cryptic it, if we hadn't got the Cryptic on Azusa. Um, Emery also brings back our uh, Damping Sphere. Summoner's Pact, yeah. Get him. Azusa. Sure. So I have double path here, and I can actually play both of them. So... Pretty curious to see how this goes down. Okay, so they've got zero. So if I path this Asusa in response to this trigger, they have no more land drops left, and they get they have four mana. So I think I'm going to do that. We can still play the other path if they somehow get their Titan out. But their next turn, they have to they're locked down, paying for the uh, pact. So I think we're in good shape here. Right, the omelet lets them untap the land off of... Uh... Okay, so they're going to activate Castle Garenbrig here, which means they, they do have Titan mana. Yeah. Maybe they'll have a second Summoner's Pact for it. That's what I'm hoping for, that they don't have the natural Titan. I think we're in okay shape. Okay, let's see what they get. Hopefully they get uh, Boros Garrison, Slayer Stronghold. They give their Titan haste, and then we get to path them off of it. Vesuva. Oh, their Slayer Stronghold was already in play. Yep, that makes sense. So here's where I fire off my second path. If I draw a land, I can play Urza. And if it's a white land, I can play the Thopter Foundry and win the game. If it's not a white land, I can play Damping Sphere and hopefully survive the next turn. And they're going to be paying for their Pact anyway, so... Should be okay there. I mean, that'll do. And I can play that with Urza. Cool. So I can use Emery for Mishra's Bobble here. They can have five, but five doesn't matter. No, they can have six. One, two three, four, and then assuming they have another green source, uh, they can they can use the Castle Garenbrig. Yeah, any green source in their hand gets them to uh, where they need to be here. I could bobble them and then tell them if they're going to draw the green source or not. But even if they get a Titan, I've got Aether Gust in hand. So. Sick top deck. Yeah. 
Yay. We got him. I think we got this. Gruel turf. Yeah, that'll do. All right, which are they mounting? See you, nerd. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. Get got. See this guy? Standing all swag. He's about to combo all over your face. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I could. So I don't have a Thopter Foundry. But I could put two Damping Spheres into play. That doesn't really matter. So one Damping Sphere puts them down to one, two, three, four, five, six mana. They put the Titan on top, so they, they're angling to cast it again next turn. So, I think I'm playing Damping Sphere and a Mishra's Bobble this turn. Yeah, Emery says cast. That's why I screwed up last night when I tried to cast the Great Furnace out of my graveyard. But they won't have the mana to haste the Titan anymore. I don't think they can get the colors. So use Emery to play a bauble. Play damping sphere from my hand. Bauble end step. I would like to draw interaction for their Titan. All right. Godspeed, little doodle. Well, that's not interaction. I've been pretty lucky so far, so. Yep. So they do get a Titan here. They cannot give it haste. So they can get field. We haven't seen a field out of their deck yet, but I assume it's in there. So we just need to get the Thopter Foundry SAP. Oh crap, there's a bog. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So we have a draw and an Urza spin this turn. No. Oh. Well, I guess we could just draw it. GG! All right. So, I think the best way to do this is just sit with it. Yeah, let's just start taking game actions. Hmm. 
Yep. Oops. So tap the sword, Thopter Foundry, sec. So I'm trying to remember the right way to loop this is activate Urza Sword Sword. Yeah, okay. Yes. Activate Sword. Okay. So opponent not willing to concede here. That's totally within their within their power, so. Alright, hold on. I said the right words. Okay. Sword, sword. What? No. Activate. Sack that. Yes. Okay, so mana. Damn it. Okay. Activate Urza. Click on sword. Click on sword. Activate Urza. Click on sword. Click on sword. Well, so, yeah, it is It is Dave is the one from Faithless Brewing who says, uh, just throw it down to the combo. And, yeah. keep clicking through this a little bit because my opponent hasn't actually conceded yet so they might be baiting me to mess with my clock okay there it goes so it's totally legit for them yeah yeah so dave is the one who says just throw it out of the combo people i don't want to have to click through that shit which is which is fair and my opponent did actually say they have a way to beat me through infinite thopters which is ulamog so if they hard cast an ulamog they can ex exile two of my creatures and then swing and kill me of course that doesn't beat the infinite thopters that kill them in the air so but yeah cryptic to tap their team and then swing with the construct because it didn't have summoning sickness was uh was a kill on that turn, so. I'm kind of like, I don't know. They're like, oh yeah, Ulamog's my out. And I, I don't, I don't think that that was an actual out to that situation. This is... A kind of gross hand, although it does have turn two Emery. I think I'm going to keep it, but it's it's gross. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. The thing is, like, okay, they play Ulamog and they exile, like, Urza and the Foundry, I, I guess. But, like, I can sack the Foundry in response... And I have an infinite amount of Thopter. Oh, so we drew a Mishra's Bobble, so we're just going to play turn one Emery, so this hand got a whole bunch better. Alright, looks like we might be in for a mirror match, but it could be any number of things. Emery, Lurker, Block, yep. They're getting a turn two Emery on, on the play. We're getting the turn one Emery on the draw, so, you know, got him. It looks like we're against blue-green. So, I think they should have the edge because they're not... Uh, they're playing a fair plan unless we manage to s just smoke them out of nowhere with the combo. Okay. So, I have an interesting choice here. I can play... Field of Ruin this turn into Talisman, but the Talisman mana doesn't get me anywhere. Or I can play the Mystic Sanctuary to Astrolabe and just play the Bobble out of my yard here. I think I'm playing Sanctuary into Astrolabe here. Oh, well, I mean, definitely assembling our combo quickly. What is your turn to draw? Aether spell bomb, sure. Oh, they're gonna spell bomb my Emery. Well, they might. Oh, they have engineered explosives. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cast on zero, sure. Are they playing a second Emery? No, they're just preparing for their own Urza. They're holding up all their mana, so I want to draw interaction here if I can. Uros on top for them, sure. Hey, look, I drew interaction just like I wanted. Oh, that's gross in this matchup. Okay. So I can go field into Talisman. They can counter me. And then they can resolve Urza next turn. Not really interested in losing the game like right now, so let's let's just let him go here. Ah, okay, so they're playing the new target player draws two. That's fine. They're playing the new version of Teamer um, Urza, which has basically the blue-green list, but with some uh, metallic rebukes, or not, galvanic blasts in it. All right, this is exactly what we held this for. My opponent decided to grip and rip, and they get punished. They conceded. They flat conceded. Wow. I uh, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, they don't even know what my next turn was, which, I mean, I was going to play a Teferi, but it's not. <sighs> okay. So they have the ability to bring in Blood Moon, so I want to kind of look out for that. I think Tormod's Crypt is pretty good here. Mystical Dispute is good. Disdainful Stroke's okay. Path is not the best. It kills Urza's, but... Yeah, that was a, that was a super tilt scoop, I think. I think they, they were just not happy with the way that game was going, apparently. I don't think we need Damping Sphere. Aether Spell Bomb is also pretty bad. Maybe one... No, Emery's pretty nuts, huh? They play multiple colorless cards that you care about. No, most of their threats are... Uh, so their threats are Uro and Urza. So... I don't I don't think we want ceremonious rejection is I think where you were trying to get to. Okay. I think 
I think boarding like this would be fine. I think the Mystical Disputes are good. I think they're better than Metallic Rebuke in this matchup. Yeah, all of their threats are blue or green. The only thing Rebuke would really hit is like the Blood Moon, which is not, not necessarily the end of the world. I mean, I appreciate the way you angle your questions sometimes, Roy, but like that one was was easy. I think I could cut the words here for to bring the rebukes back because I'm expecting this game to go reasonably long, and there's nothing. Oh no, I have the Tormon script. I'm bringing in. All right, I think I think we just cut the rebukes and we just call it a day here. Yeah, I know Rebuke might hit red sideboard cards, but the only red sideboard card I know of is Blood Moon. And I'm an Astrolabe deck that can fetch basics if I if I choose to. Okay, my opponent mulliganed. I'm pretty incentivized to keep this risky, risky, risky hand. Because I have two redraws. I don't need my mana on turn one. Feel like I could just crush them here if I. But no, I, I got a mulligan this. Trim on combo for interaction. Yeah, that was. I just think that their deck is going to be better at interacting, so we don't really want to trim on combo. Sand has a lot of upside, but if I don't draw the land, I get horribly punished, so. Alright, let, let's, let's, let's find it hand with lands. Yeah, there we go. Now oh, this is great. I think we just bought him were here, but otherwise we're like A+. plus. We've got the curve that I talked about in the deck tech, which is uh, Astrolabe into Talisman. Yeah, we, we I, I mulled it. I mulled it. It was, it was like real close for me. That was definitely like I, I was very tempted to keep that, but Yeah, you you are predicting the future right now, Roy. You are you are calling exactly what I did. So there's an argument here for just sitting with rebuke against their turn two Emery. But I think if they have a backup one, that's pretty bad for us, so. I think we're both going to set up our engine here and let's just see which one of them runs better. Tap land. Okay, that's good. So they missed on the turn to Emery. So... Assuming that they don't have... Assuming that the card in their hand is Mystical Dispute, I think I'm going to play my Talisman. And then just sit. Because they can't play Metallic Rebuke. Cool. So I can play my Mystical Dispute off of this. And if they Blood Moon me right now, I really don't give a flying flip. And they miss their land drop. Sweet. Here comes the Emery, comes the Emery. Uh, I can just pay for that. The question is, is that smart? So they missed their land drop, so the most threatening thing they could do next turn is nothing. I suppose I could just let it resolve and play my backup Emery. That's the most efficient way to navigate this turn. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Roy. I think I'm going to let this one resolve and just play the backup Emery. Surprise! It's Emery number two! Oh. Very well. In for a penny, in for a pound, I suppose. 
I think resolving the Emery is worth it here. Yeah, yeah. So you are once again predicting the future. Let's see if they hit their third land. They got their own Emery, but I'm ahead on board. And I've got combo now. So I'm going to play Thopter Foundry. Sack my Astrolabe. And then Emery play my Astrolabe. Nice. So now I can whir for Tormod's Crypt and wipe out their graveyard. And they scooped. Wow. I, all right. Uh, opponent super did not want to play from behind. Uh, I guess I've had those days too. And if you're if you're done with magic for the day, be done with magic for the day. Self-care, folks, especially in these stressful times. No, I knew they had the, the bauble in the yard, but we were going to be able to were for the um, for the Tormod script. Okay, so this hand is Chonky. I have a redraw, but the redraw means I can't turn to Emery. I think I'm going to mull that. Okay, this is this is poor. I think this is better though. I know I can't currently. Oh boy. I know I can't currently play this uh, Astrolabe, but hopefully we pick up the Snowland here. Opponent draws Cavern of Souls, okay. I think the deck could have put out a better five. I didn't go for it. Uh, I am often greedy with hands, especially when I'm not playing a deck I consider to be proactive. Opponent... Kind of fizzled, fizzled out on turn two, so let's hope we get our land. Maximum punished. All right. Yeah, for better or for worse, I didn't consider that I was like playing a proactive deck on this side. In in most matchups, I'm looking to kind of play a slower game. Okay. I mean, on the plus side, we've got a great discard, but I cost myself this game. Like, we're, we're not even playing Magic here, right? And they're just going to pull way ahead. Like, is it possible that the five was going to be even worse? Yeah, sure, but it probably would have had more than one land. So they can double strike their Dryad and beat me for four here. They've got a pretty spectacularly slow hand despite the fact that it had double amulet. We actually would have been in okay shape. Our hand did see multiple cards. All right, I'm gonna scoop there. Don't Don't feel like playing that game out any further. We know what we're up against. We have all the information that we need. So Damping Sphere, the second, is probably a good idea if I want to naturally draw it. Stroke is pretty good. And the Paths. Actually, I don't think we need a second Sphere. Yeah, that's... Yes. We, we did see one extra card. So we were going to see three cards before we needed... The second land. So we have Bobble, first turn draw, second turn draw. And we only needed one land to really get rolling. 
because we were going to have Talisman. Yeah, I'm getting plenty of Titan, Titan matchups tonight. Teferi's pretty poor. Can trim on one, Thopter, Foundry, Bauble's not good without Ashiok, and there was one more. I think the rebukes are worse than Thought Profoundry here. Being able to combo out of nowhere is a pretty big game. Yeah, see, this is what I was talking about the other night, where some nights you just don't run into Titan a lot. It was like two, two leagues. The problem is we had six dead lands. What, in the whole deck? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Don't get me wrong, like it was a bad hand. I'm aware it was a bad hand. I just didn't want to go to five in the dark. But I guess we were on the draw, so it would have been more okay. I just really still quite... Okay, so we've got the full combo here plus ramp. So I think I'm going to stick this. No, I understand the math is bad too. I just sometimes I keep hands like that and get rewarded, and sometimes I get keep hands like that and get horribly punished. Because I guess in my mind the cost of mulliganing is quite high, which is not correct, but it's the way I still think about it often. Okay, so I'm gonna play Thopter Foundry here. Because next turn I can play... Actually, I play, should have played Sword here. Because Sword being in play and vulnerable is something I don't really mind. But the important part of the sequencing here was to play... Um, the Foundry or the Sword on 2, not the uh, Talisman. Because Talisman leads me to playing Urza on 3. I guess it doesn't really matter in which order I do that. And having the Urza out is probably the best of the 3. So I think I took this in the wrong direction. Turn three ears is dope. Yeah, I elected for not that. No, I understand. I, I get it. I totally get the, the actual lands in the actual deck that we were going to draw had a percentage chance of being quite poor. But I was like, nah, it's cool. We'll draw one of the lands we need and we'll just be off to the races. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. Okay, uh, I have this word now, it can't get me Damping Sphere. So I think we're just going Talisman as a sword here. Yeah. Ah, they had a pact. That's right. Okay, cool. So we should be okay here because they could get the Titan and they could even attack with the Titan. But it doesn't look like they have it. Okay, so I think we got there. So natural curve into combo, cool. Yeah, okay, they scoop. <laughs> Talisman and sword is something you care about worrying for, or are they dead? Yes, so I was just considering if there was something that was worth worrying for, and there wasn't. I don't know if they play main deck dismember. They do not. I'm pretty sure they do not play main deck dismember. They certainly play sideboard dismembers. 
which I guess means the way that I put my con yeah okay so that's an incentive so the choice in that game was do we play turn two talisman into turn three Urza or do we sequence it out the way that I did and I suppose the way that I did protects us from dismember because we can combo at instant speed really I was wondering about that I know you can W for the lands. I didn't know you could W for Urza. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Foundry or the sword. Remember, the sword taps for mana too. Oh, Daniel's been around before. Or are you just welcoming him to specifically tonight's? So this doesn't have any interaction. Polnant took a mulligan, but their deck mulligan spectacularly well. I guess it has Field of Ruin, technically. Just looking for a reason to keep it. Five lands is a lot. Okay, I got you. Thanks, Roy. Brand ambassador Roy the boy Posarathanathan. Posarathanathan. There we go. How important is field? Field's like medium. Yeah, all right. We're going to mull this. It's just not good enough. We're going to hit a worse six. This is, this is okay. I'm going to ship the sanctuary, and then we're good. No, yeah, ship the sanctuary because this comes into play ta untapped on turn three. Uh, as long as I fetch basic with the flooded strand. Please, no talisman. Thank goodness. Oh, sick. Deck is uh, deck is excited to win this one. Okay, I think we sit with Aether Gust here. There's enough of an upside. And then next turn, if we fired off our Aether Gust, I guess we go Talisman into Thopter Foundry. So if this is Asusa or Dryad, I think I'm firing this off. Let's hope they packed. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So it feels real crappy to go shields down. But I think we have to. They did put the Dryad on top, so we're going to see the Dryad come back. We've got a Cryptic for next turn, so hopefully we've got a Cryptic for next turn, and we can sack our Astrolabe and make a 1-1 Thopter and get the beatdown going. So, I mean, they're on a clock. They may be at 24, but they're totally screwed. That's a hard cast Force of Vigor. Well, that was just rude. Uh, but we've got Cryptic into Mystic Sanctuary here, so not worried about that. Okay, here's the question. Do we Cryptic bounce their Simic Growth Chamber? I don't, right? Because then they just get to reset their Gemstone Mine. Okay, we're going to just counter draw. 
Sick. Oh, this field is nice. That is good. So what am I more interested in this turn? Mystic Sanctuary or Field of Ruin? I think I want to I think I want to reset my cryptic. Because then we have a, a defense against their If you still had Thopter Foundry, I'd bounce it. Right, okay. Did you know Dryad of the Lysian Grove does not have reach? But Roy, he's in a tree. He's literally in a tree. I don't understand. A sloth, which only climbs into trees, you know. So they put primetime on top of their deck, which... Get my cryptic. Okay. So I have six mana here, which means I can draw step field them after they've drawn their Titan and then still have cryptic mana. So that's what we're going to do. Oop. So we know they have a Titan in their hand. At least one. They have another growth chamber. Okay. okay so they, they also would have needed an untapped land. Okay, and this is a second Mystic Sanctuary if I want it. They've got six plus the gemstone mine. So I think if they play Titan, we go Cryptic Counter Draw, and then we just fetch the second Mystic Sanctuary. Because I want to get up on cards here. Get up. Get on up. And then this bobble is going to let me reset the cryptic on the next loop around. Cool. So the bobble means that I can cryptic, bounce my Mystic Sanctuary, play the Mystic Sanctuary, bobble them, and then redraw the cryptic. So we're doing okay. Yeah, I always one of the things I want to make sure of when I'm playing this kind of deck is how many sanctuaries do I have? Because sometimes they play one, sometimes they play three. Um, it depends on the number of lands in your deck. If it's like closer to twenty, usually that means you're playing exactly one. If it's closer to twenty-two, you're gonna play two, twenty-three, or twenty-four, you're gonna play the the third one. Okay. Oh, hold on. The loop begins. Hey! That's freaking sweet, dude. I got a backup now. Really like to find Emery sometime soon. What is the top card of me, your library opponent? Amulet of Vigor. That's completely fine. Check if you can kill him with double bounce. No, I, uh, not even close. Actually, could I have? Oh, I think you're right. No, no, no. No, 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 double bounce didn't kill them. They had four green. A Lamau. Okay, we're good. Hey, 
Remember how I needed that Emery? Got him. Got him. So we're just looking for Sword of the Meek now. Like, I wanted to say like that one, but there's no, there there isn't one. We didn't we didn't get the get the get. Okay. We're in good shape here though. They need to double spell now to to start getting ahead. They've already worked through three titans of their eight in 16 cards. I love you, Emery. Gift me a sword. Make me a king. Oh, are they going? Oh, baby. All right. Are they finally going to blow me out with Veil? Please, no. Okay. I think I'm just getting back a bobble for now. Um, Thopter Foundry is... Oh, you know what? I could have gotten... No, I can get... Yeah. I want to have the bobble, but I can get Foundry next turn. Sack my Astrolabe. It's a Kerr Tribe Scout. Sure. That is not frightening. Okay. Yeah, I guess the... Okay, Amulet is on top. Sure. I guess Bobble kind of keeps me safe. Okay, so that means I'm getting the Foundry back. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Okay, good, good, good. And just in case, I want to use the Mox Amber wherever possible. We pat their next Titan there at zero Titans. No, they have two more Titans. When I said three Titans, I meant a Summoner's Pact and two Titans. I was talking about the Titan density in their deck for, for top decking purposes. I wasn't talking about the literal, factual number of, of the card Primeval Titan. Uh, and also, if I was intending to sacrifice the um, the Astrolabe like I did there, um, because they have Sakura Tribe Scout and because they can have Bajuka Bog in their deck, um, I should have let, left sacrificing the Astrolabe to last. Because if they bog you with Sword of the Meek in the graveyard, you can respond to it um, by grabbing or by sacrificing a different artifact to scoop the sword out again. So I can put another 8 power into play next turn. So we got a reasonably quick clock, plus I picked up this Archmage's Charm. I'm going to play Astrolabe here, just draw my card immediately. I suppose this doesn't means I don't get to look at the top card of their deck, but I, I, think, we're, I think we're good here. Another Scout, sure. So... They're on a two-turn clock. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to get through all the clicking here. So, 4, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I'll do one more. I left up one mana last turn. I think it's 
if you're going to commit to the line of playing in such a way to protect your combo, then I think you should stick with it. So it doesn't look like you're a slob like me who just does stuff. We drew this Urza, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can play Urza and have uh, Cryptic or Charm. So I, I guess it's worth doing. Because if it, assuming it resolves and stays in play, it's just over. But, I mean, it was already just over, so uh, six and one half dozen of the other. All right, there we go. Got him. So 2-0 against Titan in this league, and I think we're 3-1 overall. Yeah, nice. We got got by Storm in the first one, but... Uh, and even though we had a colossally brutal um, game one there where I kept a really greedy seven and got horribly punished, no problem in game two and three. What does gin taste like, Roy? It's pine needles, right? It's fucking pine needles, dude. Roy, it's fucking pine needles. Roy, Roy, Roy. Gin tastes like pine needles. I know. Shocker. Juniper might be more... Oh, wow. Look at that. The double. Daniel and Roy... Lee, like just laying into me with the juniper berries all right this is this is a pretty brutal hand here against cheese sample which is a great name we're on our way to a 4-1 here so i don't really feel like throwing this match to this mediocre hand i don't know man it's just so slow This is marginally better, but we'll throw back the Urza. Hopefully they're playing a Blood Moon deck, which are not particularly popular right now. Oh, look! Ooh. Pre-land ancient stirrings. He's going to roy me, Roy. He's going to roy me. He's going to roy me so hard. He's going to go ancient stirrings, activate Sakura tribe scout for the land drop, and then play the actual land drop afterwards. And just, just completely mess with my brain. All right, we're just firing off Emery here. Hopefully get some draw going on. Uh, I have Archmage's Charm or... Hey, I milled a Sword of the Meek. Nice! Uh, I have Archmage's Charm or... Uh, words. What are words? Or Teferi next turn. Teferi's not particularly good in this matchup. Teferi has not been good this league. Uh, he would have been really good against the team or Urza deck. Did they not Sakura Chive Elder at the end of turn? They did, right? They did. Okay, they did. Cool. I got distracted. I saw something shiny, all right? All right, and we flipped a bobble with Emery, too. So I was like... Like, the last, like, week, my Emery's always, like, mill two Emery's and, like, an Urza. Except for that one time where I milled three Emery's and an Urza. But this time we actually milled bobble into sword, which is, like, just perfect. All right, Titan, is it Titan time? Mighty Morphin Power Titans. Do 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 do. It's actually that's the that is the wrong, the wrong children's property. That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do 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 do. Go go prime. Yeah, Power Titan. Go go Power Titan. Go go Power Titan. 
Did I say tight Anne? So I can be a big Twitch personality. I can use the words language rebel. All right. So I have a Whirr. And I have an Urza. And I have a Thopter Foundry. So I can play Urza into Foundry and win? Yeah, I think I just win. Is he dead? I think he's dead. I think OP is dead. So I play Urza. I get a Construct. Construct and Bob will give me two mana, one of which gets filtered white, and then we win. Specifically because the sword got milled into my graveyard. So, sick! Got him! Opponent scooped. Yay, concession lockup! Yay, magic! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're good. What's the win condition for these decks? So, these decks don't technically have one. Um, in paper, what you say is, I'm going to go to infinite life and infinite thopters, and then if your opponent like wants to take their turn, you can either tell them that you're going to respond to any spell they play by activating Urza until you hit one of your four hard counters, um, or you could say, okay, I'm going to Urza for most of my deck, and you basically do that until you have, like, Teferi, Damping Sphere, uh, and you can Cryptic Bounce one or two of their lands. Um, so, t like, it's... You don't technically win on the spot. If, if you're curious about that, that is factually true. You do not actually win immediately. I think that's, like, accurate, Roy. Like, I think in, in paper, your opponent is very likely to scoop to infinite impact tremor for faster kill. N I, I have. Uh, I think time sieve is considerably more appealing. I think this hand is pretty unappealing. My opponent kept seven, which makes me want to keep it, but I'm not going to because it's bad. This is worse. <sighs> Sure. All right. This is also quite poor. So I'm bottoming were and foundry and hoping that I draw snow land reasonably soon. I'm really glad I put the foundry on the bottom. I really should have shocked that. Oh, transmute artifact. It's talking about tra transmute artifact. I, my opponent may have screwed up there. It's hard to tell because they. They played the second amulet, and then they played Castle Garenbrig, but because they had a forest already, it just came into play untapped and didn't get triggers. Wow. Glad I have my Maelstrom Pulse packed and ready to go. So they can choose Hallowed Fountain here. What the hell? How did they... That... 
I don't think that that should work, but okay. Sure it does. Okay, so they, ha they have a potential of four mana here. Beast within my land. That's just rude. Um, it's technically correct to float the white. Okay. Roy, do I path myself? You should use the category Magic Gathering for your stream, by the way. I'll get more viewers. Am I not in the Magic Cat? What? What? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. All right. I cannot believe that I wasn't in there. I should have been in there. All right. Yep, fixed it. I did not ever notice that. Path the beast. Yeah, do I path the beast here? I'm pretty sure I path the beast here, right? Cuz this gets me a snowland for my for my Arkham's Astrolabe. I'm taking this line. I don't know if it's right or wrong. It's almost definitely wrong. Nice. Okay, so I can field into Astrolabe here, and since okay, so that and that puts them down mana potentially. I think so. The reason not to do that is to conceal information about the fact that I can't play any of the cards in my hand. I don't know how valuable that is. I think we're just gonna grip it. Yeah, I think tap up for Foundry, then hold up Charm. I don't think that we're doing that. I think we're doing this line that I came up with. Uh, thanks for the advice, Dan. I was wondering why I wasn't getting more viewers sometimes. Because we would get up to 5 to 10 viewers, and usually that's where you start kind of accruing some number of viewers from people just browsing Twitch. Okay, so they've got a million mana here. Packed. Okay, so we're probably dead. We haven't seen their deck go off yet, so... What section was the stream in? Uh, card and board games or something? It was something close, but... They get Growth Chamber Teleria. So this does not give the Titan haste. So... If we top deck a land and bobble into a path to exile oh god oh they're getting a second titan jesus yeah that's gross can they put all of their titans into play this way they can right i'm gonna let them waste their time uh, going nuts here it's not that they have a second Titan. They can get all their Titans here. Although they could kill themselves by making the... They already have two Summoner's Packs to pay for. Which they currently can't do, but they will with the... Yeah. We'll see if they have enough green sources to pay for them all, though.
This is also a really ballsy move against the blue-white deck, because we could verdict them next turn. Okay, so there's one hasted titan. Oh no no no, that's three hasted titans. Right, okay, we're just dead. Well well played opponent. Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. I hadn't seen the the uh, Slayer Stronghold or anything from them yet, so I just wanted to see it. All oh, these D spheres in our board would have been sick there. Yeah, we've played against this list twice tonight. It's been weird. I just, like, maybe they were playing some weird, like, straight blue-green Titan deck, which didn't actually kill you the turn they resolved their Titans. I don't think D-Sphere is actually good. Yeah, Damping Sphere is good. Detention Sphere is not good. I don't, uh, D, D sphere can't. D sphere is damp is uh, detention sphere. Damping sphere is the is the wet ball, or dampening sphere, which some people like to refer to it as. Should probably have the second damping sphere in. I don't know why I'm reluctant. Okay, we're gonna keep this. Has disruption. Turn to Emery. Dusphere. That's true. Could be Dusphere. Give him Dusphere. Could also draw another zero mana artifact next turn. That would be ideal. Cavern is fine. Oh, please tell me they choose Elf or... Well, they choose giant. And they have the turn one omelet. Alright, well, we can steal their amulet. Oh, crap, I missed my fetch. It's cool, I totally meant to do that. Gonna get an island, and then we can get the prairie stream with the next one. Must we mill it here? Oh my god, we did! <laughs> Called shots! Uh, also on the next 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 turn, we'll be able to uh, Mystic Sanctuary my path on top. So really hoping they don't go off hard here. I really hope they screwed up their cavern and they were supposed to name Dryad or, hu or Druid or Human here and that they only have like Boros Garrison in their hand. Garen Brig is fine. It means they only have two mana this turn. Ancient Stirring is also fine. Graft Digger's Cage. Well, that's obnoxious. So playing Thopter Foundry here and attacking for one. Doot. <coughs> I mean, Cage is not the end of the world at all.
Like them getting cage off of the ancient stirrings is not all that bad. Field here is is completely fine because they're gonna play Dryad or Azusa. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Why? What? So this does allow me to uh, whir still. So uh, do I turn my Mox Amber into a Thopter here? I think it's probably worth it. Is it? Nah. If I draw the whir. If I had had one more mana being able to reset my Archmage... What is this? You jerk. Okay. So I don't want to sack the Foundry in response. I might want to sack the Mox Amber and then just kill him with 5 power. Because I have multiple spells from here. So, it's a pretty aggressive line, but I think I'm comfortable taking it. Hey, hey! So, I think I play Sanctuary here and put Path on top. This means I could whir. I could whir for D Sphere right now, but that means I lose the path that's on top. That's not necessarily the end of the world at all. So, it may be worth doing. Um, if it gets to the end of turn and I'm not threatened with anything, then I might just Archmage myself to draw to. Because I don't really need to do anything else. I just need to counter what they play. Sakura Tribe Scout. Uh, yeah, that's fine. They already played their land for this turn? Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to charm myself to draw two. want to draw a fetch land or similar. Land would be good. Second word is not great, but bobble's fine. Here come the beats, here come the beats. <laughs> So, if they have a Titan right now, they can play it as long as they have a single land in hand. I need to be able to gust it. Okay, so we're not worrying right now. I love how they reverted to targeting on a card draw spell. Well, if you listen to Mark Rose Waters Drive to Work, which I know you do, um, Mark believes that they should have targeted card draw all the time. Obviously, the decision is not always up to him. And so basically what they've worked out is uh, you can have targeted card draw if it's relevant in the environment. So either if milling is relevant or if it's like on an X spell usually where they want it to be usable as a kill condition. What the hell is that doing in there? Okay. Uh, so I can't counter that. Right now, my deck just has D Sphere, Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meeks. So I think 
I think we get a D sphere here because it stops them from playing any artifact that they got with that. And I can attack him down to one next turn, which means they can't wish for another artifact. Don't mystical dispute me, bro, brosette, bro they, brobot. I can't, if, if they get an artifact that costs one or zero, I can't, I can't do what I did. I suppose I should have waited until they ticked down the Karn. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I should have done that. No, but I could have waited until they, uh, until they activated Karn. They could tick up on Bobble. That is definitely an option. No, they haven't activated Karn yet. Still sitting on 5 loyalty. With his handsome face. Look at him. Arr, look at my jaw. And his sick robo legs. He looks like a spray painted bodybuilder. He does. Come with me if you want to lift. Opponents burning down their clock. All right, they did in fact tick up on my bobble. So if I path their scout, I can crack Karn for five, which seems worthwhile. They packed. Wow. That's bold. Okay, so they, they do still have Cabin of Souls. They have to pay for their pact right now. So I think we're going path... And then they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they, they are definitely not playing Titan next turn. Save path for Titan. That means I'm letting them Karn again. Do I care? We can steal the scout and attack down Karn. That's a beautiful line. Well, we'll put Karn to one, yeah. Which is all we need. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot, actually. Yeah.
I do. I actually think it works best. Yeah, I, I think I do. The question is, do we attack them or the car? Yeah, we definitely attack the Karn. So put the Karn to one now. Yeah. They can't play Titan this turn. When they play Titan next turn, we can gust it. When they play Titan the turn after that, we path it. So we should, should be in the clear. We're definitely real close. Uh, the thing about pathing Titan the turn after is um, they're liable to get their field. Plus your Karn, dude. Please plus your Karn. Don't lose this way. Another Sakura tribe's get sure. That's actually a pain in the butt. If you don't plus your Karn, I'm just killing it with the Thopter. So. Okay, good. So they actually don't currently have enough mana for Titan unless they have a minute, uh, land in hand. I'm not actually going to play a line in a way that allows for that, but I think we just swing everything at Karn, which sucks. This deck doesn't play Glass Casket. I feel like that card has potential. It definitely does. All right, I think I'm going to play Astrolabe to draw a card here. And then after that, we'll see where we're at. Another mana is fine. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah, we did want to do that. So I don't actually have to attack Karn with the Sakura Tribe Scout and give them the opportunity to trade it now. I could attack them with it. I can always attack Karn with the Thopter and then attack the player with 5 power. I think that's the best... I think that's the best line. Because I don't need to kill the Karn at all right now. Suppose I could attack Karn with Thopter and Sac Sakura Tribe Scout, give them the opportunity to trade it. Could also attack them the the Karn with Thopter and Emery. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think you, yeah, you helped me figure out the right line. And then. I can whir at end of turn to get another bubble or astrolabe, which is, yeah, okay, I figured they would do that. So they need a land here to play Titan. I wonder if they've been holding it. Karn on nothing. There it is.
See ya. Okay, I don't need to do anything in the turn here. So if I attack them for four now, and Karn for one. No, I, I need, I think I need to kill the Karn because their Titan's gonna resolve this time. And I, uh, they're gonna start getting zombies, which means I need Thopters to finish this game. So we're gonna kill Karn, and then we're gonna whir for Thopter Foundry and Path. The Titan. So this one's going to resolve. I will let them get what lands they want. We can't play anything with Emery. We haven't been able to play anything with Emery all game because they have a Graft Digger's Cage. <laughs> yeah, it's been there all game. They got the stirrings on turn two into cage. That was like, bleh. but then they aggressively went for our beast. They get bog and cavern. Interesting. And they, because they got cavern, they don't, they didn't hit enough land names. It's a little bizarre. I mean, I already played a land for turn. Okay. So we're going to play path first. They do get a zombie here. One zombie is fine. Um, then we're going to work for... One, two, three. I'm going to work for the spell bomb. I uh, could have done that. I think my plan is still good.
So I can... I can get my second Mystic Sanctuary. If I want. And draw whatever I reset on top with a bobble. I think I'm attacking with everything here. Because that'll put them to one. Uh, or or it puts them to three if they block the beast. And then I can reset the whir and then use the whir to go get sword. I think we didn't lose a sword yet. So get the Mystic Sanctuary... Put we're on top. We're, it, it also gives us the option, uh, as you pointed out, to... No, Aether's Problem is not in our deck right now. I boarded it out, because I think it's bad against that deck without uh, Ashiok in your deck. All right. And we can also sack the D-Sphere at the end of their turn in order to uh, get... Uh, the third Thopter. So I think... I think we get there. I don't think Titan kills us. So Titan's fine. Which is... <laughs> Vomit-inducing sentence. Opponent cast Primeval Titan. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to be fine. Might have to sack two artifacts this turn. So the thing is, we can still whir for sword and make three thopters. Uh, the Boros Garrison they got can't tap for red mana, so uh, they've locked themselves out of being able to attack with Titan. Cool. So we hit the 4-1. Uh, close one. Close one. I think even if they did get to attack and trigger again, I think we were still good, but uh, very, very interesting match. Anywho, uh, this deck was pretty sweet. Uh, it follows one of my theories about uh, this card, Mox Amber. It's playing exactly one Mox Amber, not... Uh, I think I think one or four is basically where you want to be with that in any non-Breach deck. In the Breach decks, two, two makes sense. Two or three is also fine. I like the one that was playing four. That was pretty nutty. Oh, what's up, Paul? Oh, we got super good EV. Oh, a cheese sample. Yo, dude, that that was a sick game. Uh, if you check my YouTube in the morning, um, which it is vaguely linked on here, or you can watch the replay later in the in the highlighted videos, that was a sick game from both sides. Yeah, cheese sample. Yeah, yeah, pretty sick. Good Titan player, good human. Uh, anywho, this deck was pretty sweet. We're going to be moving on to... Team Urza or Four Color Iceberg in a second here. Uh, not sure which one I'm going to move on to, but if you are watching this on YouTube in the future, I've got lots of other wonderful videos. I've got infinite variations of Urza, and this has been an interesting one. Teferi was like really weak all league, but I think we played against Titan three times. Uh, Urza once and Storm, and Teferi's not particularly good in most of those matchups. It would have been good against the Teamer Urza player, except they just, like, Rage Scooped out of both games, so I'm not entirely sure if that matchup would have been more interesting or not, but otherwise definitely seems like a sweet variation that's come up over the last week, and uh, anyone playing it, this is definitely something I could get behind. Um, not having to play things like Thoughtseize is kind of nice, Um I like not playing Fatal Push at all in the main deck, or Path to Exile as the equivalent. I like it as a sideboard card here. 
And uh, yeah, so we'll be popping over to another deck in just a second. I'm not sure which one. I'll figure that out as I uh, head to the washroom and stuff. Yeah, Paul, we've, uh, we've I've been crushing it in the last few days. It's like all four ones. I think it's because more people are playing, so there's a higher density of less good players. But that was a sick finish to that league. Cheese sample with the awesome, awesome Titan play. We we just 